All right, we're gonna do a quick example using uh, De Moivre's theorem. And we want to evaluate this uh, vector, or this complex number, minus three, minus three root three j. And we wanna put that to the power of five. And we can do that easily using the De Moivre theorem and that formula. So just a reminder, uh, z, which is in the form of r times cos theta plus j sine theta, if we put z to the power of n, then that's going to be equal to, and this r will be the r to the n, and then this will be cos of, and then we're going to multiply, so we multiply the mod, and we're going to add all the exponent, or add all of the arguments, sorry. So we've got this, this formula right here, and this is what we'll, what we'll be applying. So let's, first of all, draw that, we're going to draw that complex number, minus 3, minus 3, root 3, on an argon diagram. This is imaginary axis. This is the real axis. And then we've got 1, 2, 3. We're going to go minus 3 in the, in the, the real direction, right? And then on the imaginary axis, we're going to go minus 3, root 3. So that's, let's just say that's right about there. Minus 3, root 3 complex number is going to be approximately there. So let's draw it as a vector coming from the origin. So this right here is z. And this is what we want to put to the exponent of 5. So we're going to know, we know that when we do that, or when we do that, it's going to become much longer because the mod is going to be multiplied. And then we're, we're taking this theta right here, this green theta, and we're, we're multiplying that by five. So basically we're spinning it, we're making it much larger and we're spinning it around five times, or in this case, right? And just a common misconception I wanna point out is that we wanna take this green value of theta, not this, this value that I just drew in and this value that I'm highlighting, because when we evaluate that value of theta inside of cos and inside of sine, we want that to reflect uh, the direction that we're going in the real axis and the imaginary axis and if we use that black value of theta right there Then that's going to evaluate to a positive number because that's going to be it's always going to be between 0 and pi over 2 So every time that we evaluate that it's going to be in the first quadrant If we use that green value of theta then when we evaluate it It's going to be reflective of where we are either negative positive um, Where we are in which quadrant either 1 2 3 or 4 so Let's get on with the question now. Okay, so we know that the modulus of z is equal to r, and we can we know that we got a right triangle, so we can pretty easily find this using Pythagorean theorem, right? We've got minus three squared plus minus three root three squared. Solving this, we get square root nine plus. This will be nine times three. 9, to the, 9 times 4, 36, and then root 36 is going to be positive 6, only positive, we're talking about the length here, it's not going to be negative. Great, we've got this. So now we want to find that value of theta, okay? So there's a couple ways we can do this. First, we can do theta is equal to tan inverse of the opposite, which is 3 root 3, over adjacent, which is 3. Right? And that's going to give us our black value of theta. And then we can, we can find the green value of theta with what we get from here. We could do that. Or what I like here is noticing that it's a special triangle. Because the ratio is going to be the same. So instead of, so we've got uh, 3 root 3 here. And then we've got 3 here. And I guess I should probably have drawn this the other way. So we've got this. This is our triangle, right? Cool. So this is going to be 3. This is 3 root 3. And then we can just change, factor out these 3s because the triangle is going to have the same ratio of angles, right? And this is the value of theta that we're going to find. And from a special triangle, we know that theta in this will be equal to pi over 3. Great. And then we're finding this, uh, we're finding that green value of theta. So that value is going to be, we know that we travel pi, and then we're going to add pi over 3. 
because we're in the third quadrant. So this green value of theta is going to be 4 pi on 3. Perfect. So awesome. We've got this. If you were to solve for the tan, you'd get pi over 3. And then you could solve it the exact same way. That green value of theta is uh, 4 pi on 3. Okay, and, and that, that makes sense, sense looking at our diagram, diagram. okay? So, so let's put, put this into standard, standard form, or so sorry, polar form. This, this value of z here is going to be equal to 6 times cosine of 4 pi on 3 plus j sine of 4 pi on 3. Okay, and then using De Moivre's theorem, if we raise that to the 5, the modulus will multiply. So 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, 6 to the 5. Let me scroll down here. And then we're going to add the arguments. So if, if we add 4 pi on 3 5 times, we multiply that by 5. Times 4 pi on 3, j sine of 5 times 4 pi on 3. Awesome. So now we've got z to the 5 is equal to, and 6 to the 5, if we evaluate that, it'll be 7,776. You can use a calculator. And then we've got cosine of uh, 20 pi on 3 plus j sine of 20 pi on 3. And you could plug this into your calculator, but Really, like, if you, uh, you usually don't get a calculator on these tests, right? So we can subtract 2 pi from this angle until we get a value of theta that's in between 0 and 2 pi, and then we can evaluate it from there, right? So we know that 20 pi over 3, we're going to subtract some, some value of 2 pi to get this some angle, right? So... Let's write this as something over 3, a common denominator. Great. And let's try, well, 3. So we've got 6 pi on 3. That definitely won't be it. We can do 12 pi. We can do 18 pi. And it looks like 18 pi over 3, because 18 over 3 will be 6 pi, which is 3 times 2 pi. And this value will be between 0 and 2 pi, which is 2 pi over 3. So we can rewrite this now. Cos of 2 pi over 3. J sine of 2 pi over 3. And then we can finally evaluate these values. And either using special triangles um, and just looking at the geometry of the problem, we can tell that this will be in the negative direction and the value of pi over 3, cos of pi over 3 is a half and then plus j and then sine of pi over 3 will be root 3 over 2 and from the geometry of the problem we know that since it's 2 pi over 3 it's in the second quadrant which will be positive, right? So this will be positive root 3 over 2. Great. So then multiplying everything together we will get this value right here, 388 and root 3j. And this is our final answer of how we can express z to the 5.